Hi there, Bob from Insidium here. It's Top Tip Tuesday time. And in today's video, we're going to create this particle simulation using X Particles and Nexus. And then I'll show you how we can take these particles and make this really cool additive particle material and render in Redshift. So let's start that clock and we'll begin. In our seed, we have this particle emission. Let's see how we set it up. If we go to the emitter, Object tab, we're in circle mode. The disc radius is set to 15 centimeters with a cone angle of 90, and we've got ring only selected. And if I come out this camera, you'll see that that's giving us this very flat two dimensional particle emission. Let's go back in the camera. We've also got an NX turbulence in the scene. Let's hit play. And this is giving us a really noisy, angry sim. In our turbulence, we've got the noise type set to Vora Noise, strength to 50. We've got a slightly reduced scale at 80%. Everything else is default. And what we're going to do, just to add a little bit more interest and detail, we're going to increase these octaves. Let's whack them on full. Now, what that's going to do is create loads of fuzzy detail, but we've lost those nice big swirls. And to get those back, what we're able to do is just reduce this persistence down. Let's put it down to 45%. So the strength of the noise will not persist as strongly through all of these octaves. That means that the lower down octaves will retain, uh, the shape of those will be retained within the sim. So we're getting something like this, which is kind of the, the best of both worlds. Now, obviously, it's a very rudimentary sim, but it's going to demonstrate the additive particles really nicely. All right, so let's go to Redshift and we're going to go to Redshift Render View. Let's dock it in our interface, hit play, and we're not going to get anything. That's because we need to put the appropriate tag on our emitter. We're going to go to Tags, uh, Render Tags, Redshift Object Tag. And in the Particles tab of that, we need to tell it what to instance in the place of all these particles. Let's put it on Point Instances, which is the most efficient. And there we have them in our viewport. All right. Now let's get our material sorted. We're going to go to the Material Manager, create a material, Redshift Standard Material, stick it on our emitter. Let's double click that to get the settings. In our Node Editor, we'll select the Redshift Standard Node. Now for additive materials, we don't need this base color. So let's put that on zero, close it up. Same for reflection, zero, close it up. In fact, we don't need any of these channels. We'll keep all of those on zero. We do need a mission. Let's put that on full, on two. We can go higher than that, but we'll leave it on two. And that's now our particles emitting light. And now if you want single color uh, particles um, in an additive mode, all you need to do is change this opacity to the color of your choice. So look, if we make this a, let's make it a blue color. Now we're getting this blue uh, additive material and where the particles are overlapping, they're adding until they blow out at white. So we don't want that, actually. We want the particle color, remember. Our particles have got color, and we want to pass that into here. So we can do that. We can extract that data with a node. So let's double click in this blank area and just type in user because we want the color user data node. Let's bring that in. And we need to go and give it the correct attribute name, and we can get that just by going through the presets. It's dead easy. So presets, particles, we want the particle color. And now that particle color is being fed out of this output. So all we need to do is pipe this in to the geometry opacity. This is the same input that we made a bluey purple. But instead, we're going to put the particle color in there. And now we've got the particle color going through our material. Now, it's all blown out at the moment, but that color data is there. So let's switch down our node editor. We can turn that down. Let's give ourselves a little bit more room here. So with additive particle rendering, when particles are overlapping, their um, color value is added until they get to white. Uh, so what we need to do is reduce the size of these way down. They're far too big. So let's go to our Redshift object. And let's put this scale multiplier down to, say, 0 0.05. Yeah, so even that look at that small scale, we can see the effect starting to happen. But we obviously don't have enough particle detail here. We don't have enough particles in the scene. So we're going to massively increase it. Let's just pause the rendering for a moment. Now, we've pre-cached this exact scene with the exact same settings. If I go to my emitter emission tab, in this cache, we upped the birth rate to 100,000 per frame. 
So if we activate that cache, it's going to load those particles into our viewport. And now we have got, obviously, way more particles. In fact, there are 4 million particles in this scene at any one time. So now if we hit render, what it's going to do is update all of those objects. And now it's got to create those point instances for all 4 million particles. And yes, look, now we've got it. But now we've got so many particles in the scene, the size is again too big. There's too much overlapping and too much blowing out. So let's go back to our Redshift object tag. Let's put this way down to maybe 0 0.015. So really small. It's going to rebuild those because we're resizing all those point instances that are being generated on those particles over 4 million. But there it is. Okay, so there is our scene. And where the particles are overlapping, we're getting this really cool additive particle glow. So let's just come back to an earlier frame where we've got loads of particles in the shot. And again, let's um, get Redshift to create those new instances. And this is how we get that really nice, milky, detailed additive particle look. And when rendered out, it just looks awesome.